Compared to its predecessor, the Sony ZV-1F has worse autofocus, no zoom, much more limited slow motion capabilities, a cheaper feeling build, uh, and can't even shoot photos in RAW. So why am I conflicted about which one to keep? Let's take a look. So as I just said, uh, the ZV-1F has a lot of compromises uh, when compared to it, the original ZV-1, which I have here. Um, but it actually has a few advantages over its big siblings that made me reconsider. Uh, and while I say big sibling, um, it's actually worth pointing out that the uh, 1F is slightly thicker uh, than the 1 uh, in normal use. It, you probably wouldn't even notice it, but at the same time, it's also noticeably lighter. And that's a factor for me since, as you might note, I usually carry around uh, one to three uh, different film cameras at the same time as I'm uh, recording myself with one of these. Uh, and that is actually the original reason why I got the ZV-1, um, because I did want to uh, record on a camera as opposed to my smartphone. Uh, but I didn't want to lug around even my A7C, uh, which is already tiny for full-frame cameras. And of course, at the same time, it offers a lot of consistency with the video that I get from my A7C, which we are looking at right now, uh, because it's the same uh, Sony image uh, quality. Uh, so the uh, 1F is cheaper uh, when bought new, but honestly, I can get a one uh, at pretty much the same price as the 1F uh, when I get it used, because there's so many of them out there right now. The most obvious uh, distinguishing feature of the 1F is the lens. Uh, so it has a 20 millimeter equivalent lens uh, with a 2.0 uh, aperture, uh, compared to the original uh, ZV-1, which only had a 24 millimeter equivalent lens. And you do notice that uh, once you go, go out and film yourself with the camera out uh, on your outstretched arm. With the original one, uh, you had to either stretch out your arm to the full extent or use a selfie stick uh, to get more than just your face into the frame, especially when you're using the uh, pretty good uh, auto stabilization. Um, and it's worth noting that uh, the ZV-1F does not have uh, optical stabilization, uh, which apparently the one did. Uh, so it ha only has the uh, no stabilization or active stabilization mode. So uh, it only has that software uh, stabilization while the uh, original uh, ZV-1 had the no stabilization, standard stabilization and active stabilization, which gradually increases the crop, obviously. So uh, on the uh, ZV-1F, you have that 20 millimeter lens, uh, so you can film yourself without using a uh, selfie stick and looking like a complete idiot. Uh, and uh, it's much more comfortable to film yourself with this. Uh, as an aside, uh, both of these cameras uh, record gyro data. Uh, so you can use Sony's Catalyst Browse or the new uh, Creators Cloud uh, features to stabilize in post. Uh, this also gets rid of uh, some of the really bad jitters in the back uh, that you can get in, especially in difficult lighting conditions. But that's not the only reason why I like the 1F. Uh, with the original ZV-1, I've had several instances of the camera switching on, extending the lens. While I was uh, trying to stow it in my backpack or it was already in my pocket and I just uh, nudged that button. The, the button uh, is very easy to nudge. Um, the ZV-1F does have the same uh, tiny on and off button that is easy to hit by mistake, but the lens does not extend or move at all. So at least it doesn't extend in your pocket. Of course, that also means that it doesn't have those uh, barn doors uh, protecting the lens uh, while it's retracted uh, that the uh, ZV-1 has and it actually com comes with a lens cap. 
So this is what the lens cap uh, looks like. It adds a little bit of bulk uh, to the camera, which I don't appreciate. I actually have uh, a similar lens cap from Olympus um, that had the same uh, size and that's much more flatter uh, than the Sony one. So I might be using this one. Um, also, what that means is that the ZV-1F has filter threads. So it actually has 40.5 uh, millimeter filter threads that you can use, for example, to put an ND filter on there. Another big improvement in my eyes is that uh, the 1F has a USB-C port. Um, so the port in here uh, is USB-C and I don't actually know how much of a difference that makes in uh, charging speed or transfer, um, but by now the ZV-1 is the only device that I own that uses a micro USB port. Uh, and I just don't fancy carrying around a cable just for this one. Another factor uh, that many would call and have called a plus is that the ZV-1F has the more modern updated menu system um, that also reacts with touch controls. This is not a huge deal uh, for me personally because uh, I have been using the old one uh, on my A7C uh, for quite a while and I'm used to it. Uh, but I do think that if this is your first Sony camera or you own a Sony camera that has the new one, uh, then it's much more intuitive uh, than the previous ones. The mode button on the ZV-1F uh, cycles through the modes, uh, which at first I found it kind of jarring, um, but once I used it a little, little bit, I actually got to admit, I like it more now. Uh, so this, you cycle through the modes and it just gives you the video mode, the SNQ mode, uh, the uh, auto mode and the picture mode. And then uh, you select, uh, for example, the shutter priority, aperture priority through the submit systems. Uh, and com combined with the touch controls, that's actually faster, I think, uh, than having that subsystem right when you select the mode. Both of these cameras have a 20 mega megapixel uh, Type 1 BSI CMOS uh, sensor. Uh, so they do have a fair bit of crop and do not achieve the same bokeh look uh, that a full frame camera would. For comparison, um, here's my, some footage uh, from my A7C from, with the uh, 24 millimeter uh, 2.8, which achieves better bokeh even uh, though it's one and a half stops uh, slower than the lens on the ZV-1. They both have uh, as several picture profiles, uh, including S-Log, but uh, they'd only record in 8-bit, uh, which I have been told is uh, not enough latitude to work sensibly with S-Log anyways. Um, so I would just uh, find one of the pre-installed profiles uh, that you like and uh, just use that. Um, and I would definitely advise to uh, turn down the detail amount uh, to avoid that over-sharpened look um, that you get right off the, out of the box. You can also see uh, I have a, a small rig grip plate uh, on both of these. Um, and that's uh, because the built-in grip is kind of rudimentary and the uh, ZV-1 uh, also has a really dumb uh, tripod mount placement. Uh, you can see the screw right here uh, and it's right next to the battery door. Uh, so whenever you want to uh, change the battery or the SD card, you couldn't do that uh, when you have it mounted on, for example, the grip that it ships with or another mount accessory. Uh, so yeah, uh, the ZV-1F uh, does have a better placement for that, uh, but I definitely would uh, recommend getting one of those grips because um, it just meet, makes the whole camera a lot easier to use. These grips also have multiple uh, mounting points uh, on the bottom and on the side as well, uh, which is great. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the one that's made for the uh, ZV-1F only has uh, three on the bottom right here in the center 
and then uh, one on the side uh, and none on the top. And it also doesn't have that classy wood grip. Uh, so small rig, if you're watching, I would really appreciate if you could make that wood grip with the top mounting uh, holes for the uh, 1F as well. Um, speaking of mounting locations, uh, I kind of hate uh, that the accessory shoe, uh, which is hot on the ZV-1 and then cold on the ZV-1F for some reason, uh, is on the left side. Um, while the mic jack uh, and all the ports are on the right one. So that actually makes cable management so annoying. I wish it was at least the mic port, just put it on the left side. Uh, but yeah, uh, it is what it is. Now, personally, I don't shoot raw images, uh, photos on either camera, uh, but I have definitely been using the ZV-1 uh, when I'm out with the family uh, because it's just so compact and the out-of-camera shots are great. Uh, I do prefer this over my smartphone. Uh, I get better uh, white balance, I get better uh, sharpening and better bokeh, of course, uh, from the ZV-1 uh, than I get from my Pixel. The inbuilt ND fil filter uh, getting the axe is annoying, uh, but kind of balances out uh, by the addition of the 40.5 millimeter filter threads. Uh, so you can get a variable uh, ND filter, uh, giving you a little more latitude even, uh, and screw it on onto the lens. Uh, so it does add a little bulk because variable ND filters are kind of bulky, uh, but it's not too bad actually. Uh, and uh, that kind of cancels out uh, that detractor I feel uh, from the 1F. The biggest bummer for me personally uh, is that they eliminated the great uh, slow motion uh, capabilities uh, that the ZV-1 had. Uh, I don't even want know why, um, since they have most of the same internals uh, from what I can tell. Um, anyone know, um, please let me know in the comments. I would definitely have preferred uh, to keep that slow motion uh, and I would be much more inclined to keep the ZV-1F over the ZV-1 if it had that as well. So to be perfectly honest, I have not been able to make up my mind about which of these to keep. I do feel uh, that the 1F solves some problems that I had uh, with the original one, but in return, it introduces some issues um, that I feel like Sony went beyond what they would have needed to uh, get that price decrease, which whether that was needed or not is kind of debatable in the first place. I do think that either of these cameras are great. Uh, if you're into vlogging uh, and there's an overhead camera especially, since they are super light and uh, they still provide that great Sony video uh, with very good autofocus, uh, stabilization that you can have even improve uh, with the Catalyst Browse or uh, Creator Cloud stabilizing features. Um, they have good inbuilt uh, mics. Uh, they have good Zeiss glass. Uh, and all the main manual controls uh, that a quote-unquote real camera offers. What do you think? Um, did I change your mind on the ZV-1F? Uh, do you own either of these or are you uh, considering them? Um, do you have another similar camera that you feel is a better choice? Let me know in the comments. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. And as always, uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you again.